Sutherland Brothers quiver arms of mary nearly quarter to three on bbc three counties radio Catherine rose newey uh, is from where she's written a book about envi- about the environmental crisis and the effects on animals lives uh, animals in the forest the day terrible things came is aimed at children and young teens between eight to 14 years old uh, her aim was to educate readers on these real life problems and use the animal characters to share their stories of environmental crises or more to the point housing estates Yes, um, because I I was ri- driving along a road at one point and I noticed, as you do, a big sign saying these brilliant, new, wonderful luxury houses. And behind that was a bulldozer space. And of course, animals once used to live there. It was a wild space. Where and was this exactly? It was um, somewhere in the country, um, sort of north of where somewhere. I can't remember exactly because it happens everywhere, doesn't it? So... But, you know, my thoughts were all the foxes, the hedgehogs, the deer, the ladybirds. What happens when we just bulldoze all those trees down and take their meadows and forests and fields away from them? It's a, a well-used, a well-trodden path to use animals with, with human characteristics. So, so you give them personalities, you give them words. Um, this, this has been done before and, and works well, doesn't it? Yeah, I think, although I tried quite hard to... Um, make sure that the characters behaved in similar ways to those actual species so forest um, European forest animals I did feel that they did have to have voices and speak to each other um, because I think it would have been very difficult to carry across their feelings and their confusion and their anger and all of those issues without language. It's quite a nice concept, actually, w- what it looks like to animals when they see the developers come in. What are they thinking? Are they, are they even talking to themselves or to each other? Well, yes, but, but they don't understand what it is. In my mind, they don't understand what it is. So although these particular animals live um, next to a farm in a little forest grove next to a farm and they know that humans come and plough and grow crops and things like that and make noise and disturb them, suddenly there may be extra bulldozers and trucks and all kinds of things going on, cranes, and, and that must be very confusing and frightening. And they see different kinds of humans. They see the bad humans with the cranes and the diggers and the good humans, the young humans, who I suspect are the ones you're trying to inspire, who uh, try and form a line to, to stop the development. Yeah, they um, they sort of like young activists trying to have a go at stopping the bulldozers, stopping the housing development. And unfortunately, they... Um, they don't succeed on that occasion, um, but yes, they try their very best to, to, to fight against that for the animals. There's an epilogue uh, in which we discover where the names come from, and I hadn't spotted these. Uh, Balcom the Badger, Barton the Badger, Bentley the Bat, Dakota the Deer. They're all linked to environmental campaigns, so so Balcom the Badger, uh, that's related to fracking, isn't it? That's right. Um, both Balcom the Badger and Barton the Badger in the story um, actually honour and stand in solidarity with the anti-fracking communities um, in Barton Moss and Balcombe areas of the UK and of course with other anti-fracking groups as well. You haven't just stuck to the UK, you've gone to America as well. So Dakota the Deer is linked to this huge pipeline, isn't it? That's right. Um, the Standing Rock protesters and water protectors there and yeah, there's quite a lot of other, I've sort of mixed it up a bit um, with young environmental activists as well as groups that I've honoured. What, what's the story with Flint? Because you've, you've got Flint the Fox, which is uh, linked to the the polluted water supplies in, in, in Mi- right. Michigan, it says, but I don't know yeah. the story. There was a there was a town in Michigan, um, in Flint, where for years, for many years, um, lead and other pollutants have been allowed to leak into the water supply. And uh, the authorities kept it from the communities and there's all sorts of health issues there and eventually it all came out and... um yeah, it's it's caused quite a stink. And uh, uh, literally, another one that I wasn't aware of, uh, Moksat the Munjak Deer. Now, now this one is the, I'm going to try and pronounce this, Moksatitu people. Uh, I think that's probably there? quite a good pronunciation. <laughs> um, Part of the Yenonami people. Yeah, the Moksatitu people are one of the last un, so-called un, uncontacted tribes in the Amazon rainforest. Um, they live a completely traditional life and don't have much to do with people people and the reason I uh, wove uh, the uncontacted tribes into the story was because they suffer a lot from logging and uh, and mining and that kind of thing their lands get taken and sometimes they actually get murdered 
it's quite a story mm. and then you've uh, also recognized two uh, two young activists actually um ridima pandy now this is a, a nine-year-old in india isn't it yes that's right um so she, she became rima the rabbit she stands for rima yes yeah, she became rima the rabbit um she is actually taking and it's an ongoing case i believe she's taking the indian government to court for failing to look after the environment for the youth she's suing them isn't she yeah that's right yeah that's right and she's not the only case across the world there's quite a lot of young activists who are starting to do this um sue their own governments for failing to properly care for the environment and i like the tony our tesca and she's she honors jutez cattle martinez that's right. uh, another uh, environmental activist yeah he's a bit older i think he's um young 20s or so he's a group of 21 youths um in america who are again suing the american government and corporations for uh, attacking the environment and not so looking after it. It's pretty fiercely political. This is this is trying to inspire a younger generation to take the lead of Jutez Cattle Martinez or Redeem, uh, Redeem Pandey and and follow their route. Yeah, I think yes. In the most extreme case, yes, I guess I am trying to encourage people to at least um, not necessarily become activists, but at least think about humans. Um, effects on the environment and on animals when we do just ordinary things like build new houses you know so yeah there's a whole lot of um, websites at the back of the book as well to encourage readers to take it further and, and research it. You teach teenagers young adults at Oaklands are you trying to inspire them to take an environmental action as well? Um, well it's a slightly different context but where i can um talk about these things i do i do talk about it yes and we actually do stock that book in our library at the college as a matter of fact what's going to happen if we don't act well that it's probably not a good not a good ending because it, and we don't notice because it's small increments so Insidious, things, yeah, yeah that's right and it just creeps up on us and uh, you know i think eventually the world will be a very very unpleasant place to live even for humans and in this book they win the humans they build their they build their their encampment they build their houses and then move on to the next one that's right um because i felt that just because it's a book for children it doesn't have to have a happy ending the, the animals don't necessarily have to win so because in so many cases they don't win so i wanted it to be it to be quite realistic really it's a nice little read uh, a story to save the earth animals in the forest the day terrible things came also known as humans uh, written by Catherine rose newey uh, it's available it's available on amazon isn't it, you can it use is it. it's available in paperback and ebook on amazon and where else can we find it um j just there um at the moment but all the amazons across so whether it's amazon.com amazon.co.uk and there's a very kind lady who's turning it into an audio book for me as well good stuff animals in the forest the day terrible things came good luck with that thanks nick there's uh, Catherine rose newey um i like the way those characters were born out of um either well-known uh, environmental campaigns or indeed well-known environmental campaigners i didn't spot it at all when i sat down to read the book uh, hence why i'm sure the uh, epilogue is at the end well obviously the epilogue, it would be a prologue otherwise hence why it's in the epilogue at the end of the book uh, to keep it as a surprise you're listening to nick coffer it's bbc three cannons radio uh, a little parish notice and we'll finish off with aha available now on the bbc iPod.